Greetings. Today I thought I'd appear in person um, and share two stories with you. They're just on my mind. The first one is about a lady in a wintry situation looking through the window of her kitchen. And outside there's snow on the ground everywhere and she can see these little robins flying around and they look really hungry. So she throws some bread crumbs out of the window and they all fly off. And she thought, oh no, I just really wanted to give them something to eat. And she said, I wish I could know their language. I wish I could talk to them. And she suddenly realized then from her Bible reading that morning, that's exactly why Jesus came down, God in human form came down to earth so that he would be able to communicate with us in our language in a way we could understand. And we would have a savior, a, an amazing uh, God who we really know has lived this life, the good parts and the bad parts, the things that make us happy, the things that really uh, get to our, make our hearts sore and he'd fully understand. So I just wanted to share that little story with you. The other one isn't such a nice story, but it is about the power of prayer. This one is a true story, and it's from a situation that happened in Zimbabwe many years ago during the terrorist uh, war at the time, and a very strong bush war. And there was a group of people in a place called Bulawayo, which is where I used to live, and they decided during this time they would just go and farm. And as a community, they would make sure that there was a 24 seven prayer um, ritual around the clock. Somebody would always from that community be praying. One night, uh, the terrorists arrived and herded them up and they were killed. Uh, as I said, not a great story, but one of the community managed to escape and years later met up with some of the terrorists from that activity. Some of the terrorists that actually killed the people in his community. They were all together in a church. So obviously it's been many years after the war, it's been many years where people were now living together a lot more peacefully. And in the church, the story unfolded that that night that the slaughter happened, the whole shed where it was happening. First of all, the first amazing thing was there was no crying out, there was no screams, even though these people were actually bayoneted to death. They weren't even shot. Children, um, mothers, fathers, and there was not one of them that cried out. So one would assume that there was no pain in some kind of way. I don't think there were um, that, you know, they didn't have things over their mouths so that they couldn't talk or anything like that. So I'd like to believe that they never experienced any pain, physical pain in that situation. That whole shed was lit up as if by an angelic presence. So because of that, these particular terrorists who were responsible for the killing, they gave their lives to God. They saw this miraculous happening where people they were killing didn't shout out and where there was this amazing powerful white light of protection. I think there's a similar situation in the Bible where uh, Peter is in jail and Herod is about to kill him and he's sleeping deeply and an angel comes and says Peter get up. I mean he's heavily guarded like about 16 soldiers he's chained up and as the angel says, get up, uh, the chains fall off and Peter just walks out as if he's unseen, right out of that jail and into a street somewhere. And uh, then he suddenly realizes he's not in a dream. He's not having a vision. This is actually really happening. And again, that was because of prayer. An amazing group of people, all the all the new Jewish and Gentile Christians at that time were praying for him to uh, be released, to not lose his life. So just wanted to share with you this story more out of a place of hope in the power of prayer. 
Lovely to spend a little bit of time with you this morning and for you to get to know me a little bit better and look forward to many more conversations. Bye for now.